Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 15 online game. Today we have the Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers. Week 4 matchup in the NFL here. Pretty big matchup between two division winners last year and two teams who are pretty big favorites to come out of the NFC. One team is living up to those expectations. The Eagles are 3-0. Hasn't been the prettiest 3-0 start by any means. I mean, and not against the best um, opponents either. Jaguars, Redskins, and the Colts are the, the good team, but even that Colts game was kind of shaky the way they came back, you know? But they are 3 0. Can't argue with that. They are 3 0, and, you know, they definitely have command over the NFC East right now. We'll see what happens when they play some more divisional games, but, you know, they definitely do have the command right now, and. They got that Chip Kelly offense. What else can you say? They got the Chip Kelly offense going for them. You have that. You're good. I mean, the thing about the Eagles, man, you watch their games. It's just they run so high tempo. It's that they give themselves so many chances to score in the game. So even when you do stop them and you do contain them, that's part of the reason why they come back in the second half. It's just they just give themselves so many opportunities. And eventually, you're just not going to be able to contain that team. And, they're, they're, and that kind of plays into the strength of their defense because their defense is also a pretty big weakness. And it's kind of the same thing for defense. Defense, they can't really stop people, but eventually they're going to get a few stops throughout the drive. I mean, they're not the Jacksonville Jaguars. They got a few pretty damn good players on that team. So, you know, it's a weird formula. It's a Chip Kelly's formula, you know, but it works kind of. They're three, you know, can't really argue with it. Now, whether it's a proven playoff, then that's a whole nother story. The Niners, on the other hand, they are, you know, they're in the midst of a pretty tough, you know, start to the season right now as far as schedule. They play against the Bears, the Cardinals in Arizona, and now they're playing against the Eagles. And plus, you know, no Navarro Bowman from the injury from the title game last year. There is no Aldon Smith. He's still injured, or he's still suspended, I mean. And, you know, there's a few other banged up guys in their team. I see Colin Kaepernick. We're getting kind of lucky there. We already got a, a Niners big hit fumble. And then we get that play where Kaepernick shakes the sack and completes the pass for the first down to keep the drive going. So I'm thankful for the Niners cheese going my way right now. This is actually the first time I played with the Niners all year long. I was going to take the Eagles, but I realized the Niners were home. This is a sub game, by the way. So I'll send the invite. I'm like, you know, when we take the Niners, this is the home team. And plus, I haven't taken them yet as far as I could recollect. So. You know, for my Niners fans, I'll take them. And here, third down and eight, we find Stevie Johnson for the first down. And not just the first down, the touchdown on that corner right there. So, yeah, we'll see what happens with the Niners. I've, I mean, they're poised to look pretty good in the second half of the season. But, they, you know, you got to make it out the first half of the season first. You got to make it out, you know, not too beaten and bruised right now. And the Niners, they lose this game. All of a sudden, they're 1-3. And, and it's like, ew. You see, we get the big hit there with Eric Berry. That was also an ew moment there. Eric Berry laying the boom out. Or... Eric Berry, Eric Reed, my bad. Just another Eric right there. I just finished doing a mock commentary where I, we got Eric Berry, so um, Eric Berry was in my head. That's Eric Reed. Pretty good safety for the Niners. And here, third down and six coming up after my opponent's not able to um, get that pass in. Try to squeeze it in there, but it dude dropped it. And then third down, we had it contained, but unfortunately, the power to Nick Foles rollout was able to draw a defender. And then next play, we can't tackle Brent Selleck without face masking him in the face. And now suddenly my opponent has a chance to tie the game up on this drive here at the goal line here. Second and goal at the three. Then who we get one of those flash like suction tackle animations there. And then third down, just block shedding. Just straight up block shedding. He tried to run the ball three times in a row against the Niners defense, even just banged up defense, you know. It's not the greatest idea. And we made him pay for that, man. We definitely made him pay. And he has to sell for a field goal. So that was a pretty big opportunity for him there. Could have tied the game up. I believe we get ball coming out of half. Don't really remember. But either way, though, just to tie the game up. Because he hasn't been too hot right now. And he had something going there. Could not get it. And here, third down and eight. We run the clock down on this third down. I was hoping he didn't call a timeout. Thankfully, he didn't. And we just let that clock drip. Because we were at our own 26. We weren't going to get much going there with 30 seconds left. So I was like, screw it. So anyways, the other NFL teams in week four, besides the teams that are on a bye. Seems like I pick against the Texans every single week, even though they're 2-1. But I don't know. I just don't like the Texans that much, man. There aren't too many, like interesting games this week kind of like last week there weren't too many big big matchups and i guess the thing is the team the thing that should be big matchups like chiefs and patriots chiefs aren't too good this year even though many people expected it still they're not too good this year so monday night game won't be too big of a thriller one pretty big game is a game that's been hyped up since like well since these smith got released and the schedule came out 
Panthers versus Ravens. Steve Smith has definitely found the home in Baltimore, man. You know, from the start, that was a Steve Smith-like team. You know, a team that's, you know, battling for guts and glory out there. That's Steve Smith. You know, he's a tough dude. And he just fit perfectly as that Anquan Bolden-like receiver that Flacco's been missing. Thus, the Ravens are 2-1 and one in this season. Their only loss coming against a very tough Cincinnati Bengals team. And this is going to be a big game for both teams. You know, Panthers, they just got embarrassed on national TV against the Steelers team that the jury is still out on. I mean, Le'Veon Bell. I don't know the jury's still out on him. I think we can all say Le'Veon Bell is pretty damn good. But um, the Panthers, you know, offense definitely was banged up. We'll say that. I'm not going to say it was good or bad. It's definitely banged up. Cam is still... Um, you know, trying to nurse a few injuries. D'Lo and Jonathan still were both hurt in that game. I don't think D'Lo even played from what I remember. And, you know, Panthers, and they're still kind of banged up right now. So, I think D'Lo is coming back this week. I don't know about Jonathan Stewart. But, either way, you know, the Panthers, they need that run game to get the pass game going. And, you know, against the Ravens, they're going to need it. They're going to need it because, I mean, Flacco won't be, you don't know Flacco's going to be putting up much points. It doesn't seem like the Ravens are high-powered on offense, but... You're going to need just, a, like, about 20. I don't know. That's too much to ask for, but it might be in here. You look at X wide open, but on the flea flicker, we're able to find Anquan so strong, bold in there. And I don't know how the hell so many people got open on a flea flicker like that, but I'll take him. This dude was a subscriber, not only a subscriber, but a dude who runs Sugar All Game just like I do. Now, think about the people, the subscribers that run Sugar All Game. First of all, with Madden 15, you can see what player your opponent is calling. And once, you know, I could I could recognize it myself when someone's running sugar. I run the damn thing all, all the time. But once it shows up in that thing, I'm like, all right, I know how to attack the sugar. I run it. I know what I know. What I have problems stopping. So I do that kind of stuff on these guys. That's the thing, man. You're in the sugar against me. It's probably one of the worst things you can do, you know, so... And here we get, we get a little bit fancy right now. And then third down and three. Like that second down, I tried to get fancy with the lob pass. Didn't work in third down. I tried to take a little safe sticker up, but Connor Barwin kind of baits me into that. I don't know what the hell that was. But somehow he ended up getting the pick there. And it's still a two touchdown game heading into the fourth quarter. So my opponent still got kind of a chance. So the Eagles and Niners game, I do have the Eagles winning. I, I just feel like, you know, the Niners just a little bit too banged up, man. Just a little bit too banged up. As a fortune, we're not able to catch that. But fortunately, neither is he. So we'll take it. We come out halfback passing with Frankie Gore throwing it up. And then Frank Gore still keeping it a two-touchdown game, man. We're still giving him a shot at this by, you know, our own faults. And he's going to try to take advantage of this opportunity. Throw it in coverage on Bethea, but finding, I believe, Shady McCoy there for the first down. And now at this point, he's just coming out in four verts. Pretty much every single play, but he's making a few audibles to it, so it's not just straight four verts. You see, um, dude on slant here, so he's got a few options. It's not just four verts like a lot of people do, so um, kudos to him for doing that. But the Niners cheese hits again, and he loses his second fumble of the game, so he definitely needed a lot of breaks to go his way to, you know, be able to stay in the game, and that didn't really happen for him. Unfortunately, he lost two, not one, but two fumbles in the game, so... Um, that bites him in the ass there, and, you know, we're back to being efficient on offense here, finding Anquan so strong. But, man, I don't think I remember any other big games from Week 4, man. I think there was, like, and that's the thing, man. There's not too many big, big games going on early in this season, and it's hard to tell. Packers and Bears is kind of a big game because um, those two are definitely favorites to win the NFC North. As well as the Lions, you know, but then again, they are the Lions, so the Lions might goof it up again this year. The Packers and Bears, that could be a game that, you know, later down the road, we'll be looking at and say that was a big game, even though it, we're not might not be looking at it that way right now. You see, Nick Foles is weirdly inaccurate right now. He's missing a few open guys, which I'm not complaining about since he's done the other team, but at the same time, it's kind of weird seeing. But, um, yeah, so Packers and the Bears, I mean, I don't. The thing about the Packers is they haven't been able to run the ball well. Their offensive line is pretty battered. That's also affecting their passing game with Rodgers because obviously you need the run to get the pass going. And, you know, against the Lions, that will be a weakness that will be exploited big time because the Lions can stop the average team against the run, let alone a team that can't run the ball at all. And that was, you know, the Packers' problem. Against the Bears, the Bears still struggle against the run. So... The Packers got a chance of keeping the game close. You see, watch Frankie Gore here. <laughs> Frankie Gore, relax, man. It's a blowout game. You don't got styling him like that. Actually, you know, do it. Do it for the do it for the fans, man. Do it for the viewers. But um, man, what the hell was I saying? I was saying something. Oh yeah, Packers and Bears. Yeah. So I don't know if that's gonna help the Packers stay in the game. 
And plus, Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey, they've been injured since that one game against Buffalo. It seems like they've both been nursing injuries. So, who knows how that will affect the offense? Because Marshall was gone for a good bit of that Jets and Bears game, that Monday night game that the Bears almost and kind of should have lost. The Jets didn't, you know, Jets the game. But, um, yeah, so... um. I got the Bears, though. I got the Bears at home, at Soldier Field. I think they could pull it out. So, that's that. And then, um, Saints and Cowboys, that's the Sunday night game. I mean, Cowboys could keep it close. They are at home. I mean, unless the Saints fans show up like the Niners fans showed up for week one. I mean, I don't know, man. Because the Saints are kind of, can't say they're kind of suspect this year, man. You'd think they could have taken care of the Vikings, and they did, but not by a lot, man. It was still kind of a dicey victory, so. The jury is still out on the Saints, you ask me. I still want to see if they could take care of business against the Cowboys. If they can't do that, then we got problems out here. This is like how his defense has problems with Frank Gore. Fortunately, I didn't do the smart thing. I hit a juke move with Frank Gore. He's probably got like 74 and loose in this. Probably could just hit a back juke or not anything else besides that, but, um. It's all good. It's a blowout. It's not like I'm. It's not like I need that play to come through. You know, we're just hitting flea flickers at the end of the game. So I mean, I think the Saints are gonna win the game, but same time, you know, we'll see um, how the Cowboys do because Cowboys definitely have one of the best offenses in the NFL. Because you look all across the board, Dez, Demarco, Romo himself out there. You know, they're stacked. So it's gonna be a shootout, though. It should be a shootout. It's looking to be a shootout and. You know, even though it's not the best-looking matchup, it's probably going to be an exciting game, man. So, I'm actually kind of looking forward to watching that game Sunday night. Hopefully, it's not like that last Sunday night game where the Saints just obliterated the Cowboys. As a Giants fan, I don't mind seeing that, but now I also like seeing good football games. So, we'll see how that goes. This game is over, though. This game is a wrap. We come through with the victory. So, hope you guys leave a like in the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more Madden 15 online games, and I will catch you guys next time.